G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy, and if you haven't been here before, my name is Tech. Now, today I'm coming to you while I'm on vacation from uh, Pemberton in the great southern region of Western Australia, and I want to acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands around here, the uh, Biberman Wadandi people of the Greater Noongar Nation. Uh, Pemberton is well known for its uh, hardwood forest and interspersed between uh, the wine region in this great southern region of Western Australia. Now today though, I'm not going to look at wine, I'm going to take a look at this pair of Truman boots in their 79 last in Seidel's Light Natural Limerick. So I'm on vacation here uh, in Pemberton and I've been hiking through uh, the great hardwood forest trails around here. So I thought what better place to review these Truman boots in light natural limerick. This is Truman's standard cap toe six inch work boot slash service boot design on their uh, most popular 79 last. And in this case made up from Seidel Tannery's light natural limerick. The false tongue that you see here is an aftermarket kilty made of law tanning shrunken bison uh, and comes from my friend Dale Aerosur for LV's business, Dale's Leatherworks. I have reviewed this pair of Truman boots before and I'll leave links to those videos below. So this is going to be a relatively short video just to let you know how they've worn in the last year and a half. If you want all the details about their construction, styling them and leather care, go check out my full review from last December which is up there. I will, however, quickly talk about Truman Boots here because uh, they've entered into their next phase of development. For those of you who don't know, Truman Boots was started in 2014 by Vince Romano. The, uh, the company is named after the owner's border collie, Truman. Uh, Truman first started making their boots in the American Eastern State of Pennsylvania and then moved to Colorado and then moved again to finally settle in Oregon in the American Northwest. They created basically what is one design of boot, uh, but varied it by offering three different lasts, uh, a few different outsoles, making some plain toe and others with a cap toe like this. Uh, they have a taller shaft model called the Upland and offering what uh, was really an amazing range of very interesting leathers from Horween, Charles F. Stead uh, and Seidel, just to name a few. Uh, when they started, they went with a 270 degree uh, stitch down construction model, but in time changed to a Goodyear Welk construction, presumably for speed of manufacture. Over their evolution, they have used uh, foam fillers on, on the inside as well as cork fillers, and they're now, I think, back to cork fillers. They've also gone between uh, fiberglass and steel shanks in their builds. Recently, they've also rationalized their outsole options and mainly now source from the UK Ids Hyde company and I think make their own Eugene outsole. Their retail model was uh, direct to consumer online and relied on a built to order uh, model where they started making your boot when you ordered it. From time to time, they had some made to order runs where uh, you could vary some of the options. COVID caused the same production issues as all other bootmakers where the supply chains were so stuffed up that build times just skyrocketed. And obviously Vince saw the writing on the wall then, if not before, uh, and started planning to, to convert to uh, more and more ready to ship boots. Now don't discount this move uh, so easily. Imagine building up production so that you put boots in the stock room instead of immediately earning money by uh, shipping them out as they're built. As a business advisor, I can see this takes a long-term business instinct, not a small amount of working capital put away to finance the production and some courage. Many of you are probably not small uh, business owners out there, but uh, imagine if you were earning money as you sell your goods and then deciding to practically stop selling until you build up stock. However you plan it, there's going to be a hit on cash flow. Nevertheless, they have started this and just a few weeks ago, they uh, announced at the end of June that all boots would be made ready to ship with only a few limited MTOs that would be offered in future. When they announced this, I took a look at their website and where they once offered, oh, I don't know, maybe uh, 20 plus different types of boots to be built to order, 
there were only five different makeups on the website and some of them with a really small range of available sizes. I'm guessing and hoping for them that gradually this list of offerings will or has maybe since grown. Uh, so go check out their website. I will leave a link to their website below. Now it's not an affiliate link so I don't earn anything. So if you decide to buy something from the website you can always come back here and leave me a super thanks by clicking the thanks button below, okay? <laughs> Now, let's take a look at how these boots have worn over the last uh, year and a half or so. Honestly though, I do have an insane number of boots and even though I'm starting to thin the herd and I'm selling some, I still have a gigantic rotation. That means I wear my boots regularly but not at all frequently enough to call them everyday boots. Although I do have the ones I reach out to a lot and then maybe a second tier that I reach out to more than the others and finally there are those that I sort of have to remind myself to wear. This pair fits in that second category and in summary, I kind of wear them heavily for a week or two and then I don't pick them up again uh, for another couple of months. If you twisted my arm, I think I'd have to think back and say that I've worn these maybe about 120, 130 times over the last 18 or 19 months. But, and this is a big but, I think I have tended to wear them hard. I pull them on when I'm uh, working in the yard, for example, or a couple of times I was doing some light uh, construction work as I remodel the kitchen and the bathroom, uh, uh, or especially when I go out on long full day or half day hikes around where I live, or in forest tracks like around here where I'm filming. So they have seen some uh, hard and rough use, and I do feel that it's fair to look at them uh, as long-term wear in that context. Now, first of all, the uppers have worn uh, really well. When I first reviewed these, I emailed Seidel to ask how the leathers was tanned and I never got a reply. But later, they did get back to me after a few people uh, told them about my video and they told me about the Limerick tannage. It's combination chrome and veg tanned leather. It's made on a base chrome tannage and then re-tanned with a ton of vegetable extract to give it the look and feel of veg tan leather without taking on the uh, brittle characteristics and other unfriendly characteristics of veg tanning. It's then treated with added wax and comes out as a waxy pull-up leather. I have conditioned these a couple of times now using waxy balms like the RM Williams uh, saddle conditioner and an Australian product called Oakwood which also includes, uh, includes some eucalyptus oils in the formula. I prefer the waxy balms because the leather feels waxy rather than oily and I've avoided mink oil or neat's foot oil because I think that might wet and darken the leather. Each time the conditioner soaks in quite quickly as if the leather was dry but it's not really because you can feel a waxiness in it and you always get a really strong pull-up effect under the surface. I found the leather to be uh, really durable under some tough and scratchy conditions over rocks and fallen timbers and forest trails and because of the waxy treatments, quite water resistant as I trudge over wet and muddy trails. Each time they get dirty that way, I just wipe them off with a wet cloth, uh, let them dry, uh, brush them and then sometimes put some conditioner back on them. They have become quite soft and supple uh, in the last 18 to 20 months, but not collapsed. In some boots, as the leather breaks in and uh, softens, the shaft starts to collapse, which can look quite nice. But in this case, it has resisted creasing, both at the ankle uh, as well as at the vamp. Part of that may be due to the thickness of the leather at about uh, three and a bit millimeters thick, uh, that's without any lining. And then talking about the lining, the leather lining at the vamp also has softened. I feel more so than in any of my other Truman boots. I have a couple of pairs way older than these and I still feel a little ridge uh, at the edge of the lining around the sides of the vamp. That sensation is completely gone on these. Everything about it has stood up to the mild abuse I've put them through. All the stitches are still pretty good. The uh, three-quarter storm welt looks as fresh as when new uh, and the soles, which are Vibram, uh, have worn better than on some of my other Vibram mini lug boots. The uh, corner of the heels is showing some wear and the stitching on the sole and at the toe especially and the, and the sides, they're showing some wear. Mind you, a lot of the light wear characteristics that you see may be because of my use of them uh, mainly on unpaved tracks, on softer sand, on earth and mud. Uh, there have been some gravel and rock strewn trails mixed in there, um, but certainly not on concrete. The leather laces they come with have stood up as well. 
they've gotten soaked at times, but I, I, all I do is dry them out, uh, run some conditioners through them, and they come out really well. The bright brass hardware has been great. Uh, no tarnishing whatsoever. And the speed hooks, more like solid brass posts than just hooks, have worn uh, better under the conditions than most other speed hooks. For some reason, these are the most comfortable Truman boots I own, with maybe the Smoke Rambler coming second. Check out my review of the Smoke Rambler up here. I wear these in size 8, as are all my Truman boots, uh, when my Brannock size is usually a US 8.5, and, and that's my true to size. Um, so that old thing about taking a half uh, size down uh, is correct in Truman's, at least in the 79 last for me. I find the last is uh, snug in the heel and the waist and wide at the ball of the feet and then it snugs back in at the toe box. There's not a lot of, volume, uh, a lot of volume in the quarters, uh, on my feet at least, so the instep itself is quite snug and the use of these kilties is more for looks than to snug them up. Uh, in fact, I'm probably more comfortable without the kilties, but they look kind of wicked though, don't they? <laughs> um, lengthwise, there's a little less than the usual half inch space at the toe box, but not at all feeling short or tight. I think that might be because of the way uh, of the rounding of the vamp area into an arm and toe. I like this fit for hiking, uh, but not so much for working in. I find in work boots, I like a roomier toe box so that when you uh, kneel or twist and turn or while standing on a ladder on top of a narrow uh, cabinet, your toes can move and kind of get a grip. For hiking though, you want your feet firmly snugged up, especially in thick socks, uh, so that you're getting purchase on the track and not twisting about, uh, which could sprain an ankle. The sole construction is still pretty stiff. I do think that they're as broken in as they're going to be, uh, and I kind of like them this way. They flex enough to have reduced any pre-break-in uh, heel slip, and the stiffness does help uh, stability on rough terrain. So in summary, if you haven't picked it up in my voice, I do like these. I picked them up in a Truman Seconds and Sample sale, and uh, since I've never seen them offered again, I'm thinking they were samples that were made to test the design and the leather. I'm really not sure why they didn't do a run of them, because if it was an experiment, a sample test, it's a pretty successful experiment in my view. Um, these were $374, or about $100 off regular built-to-order price. And being new and not being seconds, to me they were a really good pickup in my opinion. Uh, my little run of over 100 wares and maybe, I don't know, 800 kilometers of hiking uh, proves they're metal, I think, and I would buy them again. Well, that's it. Like I said, only a short update video, so I hope you like it. You know what to do though, right? Click on the like button so that the algorithm gods know to spread this around. And if you're not a subscriber, well, correct that now and click on the subscribe button down there. What's coming up next that you might miss if you don't subscribe? Well, I'll be looking at a brogue country boot from English historical bootmaker Joseph Cheney. Uh, a Red Wing Boots comparison and a few more long-term wear reviews. So uh, if you don't want to miss out, make sure that you do subscribe. So. Take care, and until the next time, see you again.